So the idea here is to present not only the caves that are deep, as the, the title uh, says, but also uh, to show a little bit of uh, how the Brazilian karst is in general. Just uh, so we'll start with the Brazilian karst in general, so we get an understanding how, how it is. And then we'll talk more about uh, the deep caves in Brazil. So at any point, please uh, write something if you have a question. Uh, let me know if uh, my voice isn't uh, loud enough or if there's some uh, sound issues and uh, enjoy. Some acknowledgements first. Um, all the images here are either mine or of from one of these guys here. Uh, most of them uh, are from these people. A couple of them are available on the web, so uh, I just grabbed them. Uh, none of, of these dives that I'll show that I did would be possible without the safety divers and support teams in general, and especially with these three folks right here, Guilherme, Lucio, and Laszlo. So these guys uh actually uh help me achieve uh, achieve many dreams uh, in terms of deep diving and exploration diving and uh they actually were the catalysts for many of the the dives that we'll talk here the brazilian karst is uh, is quite big uh here in brazil in uh in relation to south america this is the map of brazil and uh, the colors here just represent pretty much either uh, carbon, uh, well, uh, surface where carbonatic rocks or silicastic rocks are present. So uh, combining everything, we almost have like, you know, uh, more than 500,000 kilometers, square kilometers of, of, of rock that caves are possible, you know, where caves can develop at, in, in some way. Uh, there are countries with much more in terms of percentage, but since Brazil is so big, it's hard to find uh, uh, an area that big where caves are uh, possible. On the other hand, there are only about 18,000 caves in the Brazilian Speleological Society database, and that really represents less than 5% of the potential of all of this. So there is a lot to explore in Brazil, and we'll see that it's not easy to explore in Brazil because it's uh, it's quite big country. It's it's very very dense in terms of vegetation. Uh, there are many complications. These are the main speleological regions in Brazil. So here you can see the map of general of Brazil, and this is just this area around here okay let me just change this to uh laser pointer okay so you can uh pretty much understand that there's a large concentration around this area so around here is the atlantic ocean it's not in blue but you can imagine and uh these are the main speleological regions in brazil hang on a second okay so let's talk about this one, Grupo Bambuí, Grupo Paranoá. This is, uh, I'll, I'll just put them together because they're so closely related and there, there are some, uh, so many uh, similar things. Uh, this is the largest uh, group in terms of the database in number of caves. So there are many, many caves here. Uh, some interesting caves in this region is Gruta do Centenario, with uh, 484 meters of vertical development. So it is the, 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 the largest uh, vertical development in Brazil and in South America. And it is the largest quartzite cave, largest drop in a quartzite cave in the world. Uh, so it's originally there's many, 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 in terms of diving, there's many, many, many sinkholes, especially in this area here. On the on the Grupo Paranoa and a little bit on the on the west of Grupo Bambuí. Uh, this is a typical sinkhole of the region. This is Poção Triângulo. 
And uh, there are some uh, other interesting caves, some free active caves uh, around here in the South Bahia, uh, São Desiderio region, which are more horizontal caves with uh, longer uh, long penetrations. Next group is Asungui. Asungui is actually in the south of Sao Paulo, border with Paraná. Uh, it's not very large, but it's really important. There are many, many show caves, just like this one here, which is Gruta da Tapagem or Caverna do Diabo. And there's one of the iconic Brazilian caves, which is this one, Casa de Pedra, which is the highest portal, entra portal or entrance portal of a cave. It has 215 meters of height. You can see a helicopter here. So it's quite interesting. And as you can see, this is a, a dense forest. This is the rainforest, the, the tropical rainforest of the coast of Brazil. So this is very dense, very humid. So can you imagine just how to explore here? So this is quite interesting. There are many beautiful caves uh all around here but there's no really diving in here there's some siphons that you can uh, traverse to go from dry cave to dry cave but no really long penetrations or really cave dives in that matter um this is a very interesting group grupo una which is right in the center of bahia so this is the Atlantic Ocean here. This is the state of Bahia. And uh, there's the south state of Bahia, which is uh, Grupo Bambuí. And then right here up to the north, it, it's another group, Grupo Una. This is the group with the longest cave systems in Brazil. Two of them, Toca da Boa Vista and Toca da Barriguda, together, they almost have 150, kilometers of galleries all around. The interesting thing, they probably are the same system because they're only like 50 meters apart at the entrance of one and the other, but no one have found the connection or there is a connection probably, it's just too small to, to, to pass through probably. Uh, one of the interesting uh, things about this region is that there's many caves that are water filled, just like this one. Look at this beautiful blue. This is Pratinha. And there are other systems around Pratinha. Uh, one of the most iconic Brazilian cave dives ever was done in this cave here, which is Gruta da Bananeira, where Gilberto Menezes did a 6,400 dive. It's a really long penetration in a more than 10 hours underwater with more than uh, 30 tanks to penetrate this cave. So we, uh, it's, it's not deep cave, of course, but um, it's quite iconic in the, in the Brazilian cave diving community. This was done uh, maybe 15 years ago, 20, I don't remember for sure. One, uh, another group, it's Grupo Araras, which is located right in the interior of Brazil. It is Mato Grosso. So this is the Atlantic Ocean here, and this is bordered with Bolivia. So Bolivia is around here and Paraguay is around here. So this is deep inside Brazil, so access is very complicated. But it has some beautiful water, some really interesting caves. Most of them haven't been seen by anyone, and very few were explored. Uh, one that was explored, uh, it's, there are a couple of, of interesting sinkholes in there. Uh, this specific uh, sinkhole goes to 180 meters, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, and it's located around here in, in uh, Cáceres, okay? If I'm gonna, uh, if someone asks me, well, where do you think there's a lot of potential to discover new things in Brazil? This is, this is one of the places that, that, that I would point out as a region to go and explore and really find virgin caves. Uh, next, Grupo Corumbá, 
which is Mato Grosso do Sul, so the, the South Mato Grosso state, and it's very close to Paraguay, which uh, it's around here. And it's, it's pretty much where the cave diving uh, was born in Brazil. There are many iconic caves, and uh, the first cave diving course was conducted here in, uh, in Bonito region uh, back in the early 90s. This is also where the Pantanal, uh, the big swamp, is located. And uh, there are many, many sinkholes and many, many uh, um, uh, sp interesting springs also. Uh, this, this one here is uh, Lago Azul. You cannot dive it anymore. It's, uh, it's forbidden to dive here. It's a very fragile system. But look at the water. I would love to have dived here. I never did. This one is the Bees Hole. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, one of the longest caves in Brazil. It's uh, it's uh, very interesting, and uh, this is a small sinkhole of the entrance. Uh, Abismo and Yumas. This is an adventure to go down and dive because there's a, a, a 70 meter rappel or 50 meter. I don't remember something like this that you have to go down, put gear down. Uh, there's something here that you can uh, use as a as a support and then go dive and one of the things that you find here are these really interesting cones really large cones uh, these cones appear not only here but in uh, in other caves uh, in this region too so you can pretty much find diveable caves in all these groups of course there's a little bit of uh, water-filled caves around here, but they're pretty much just stumps that you you dive for a short period of time, and they're pretty nasty and uh, with zero visibility. So it's I won't consider it as a, a diving destination per se. So what are the deepest submerged caves in Brazil that we know? So there are uh, I, I listed here the the five deepest ones, and we'll talk about each of them. But we won't talk about Milagrosa because this is the, the only one I haven't dived. This is the one that had the nice sinkhole located here in Cáceres. So we'll talk about Lago Azul, or also known as the Stargate, here in, uh, in the Goiás state, which is a 274 meter deep dive, and it still goes. Uh, the Mysterious Lagoon, very famous dive in the Bonita region here, 220 meters. The hell, the Buraco do Inferno, or the hell hole, also in, uh, in Goiás, 185. Milagrosi we won't talk about, because I don't, I don't know much about it. And we also will talk about Poço Verde in uh, Bahia, South Bahia, with 180 meters and still going. So let's start with the Stargate. This is where the deepest Brazilian cave dive was conducted by Mr. Gilberto Menezes, which is the quintessential Brazilian explorer. He's the greatest one. He's the, he's the one that we go find caves and, oh, damn, this is a new cave. And then you find a, you know, a line and then an arrow and then you see his name. Uh, that's usually what happens. And, oh, a new passage. Oh, there's something in there. A narrow with his name. It's it's quite frustrating sometimes. But he's a great diver and a great explorer. Um, so he started to explore this uh, back in the 90s, and he conducted a 274 meter deep dive in here. I think it was 2004 or something. Uh, it's a really large sinkhole. The green water here. It's just because it's summertime and it rains a lot. And uh, there's algae bloom here for the first meters. And then the water turns a little bit like this. But it's usually like really, really beautiful deep blue water. Uh, during the summer, once you go through these first meters, like at 10 meters, it starts a great visibility, but no, no light penetration. So it's just like... A real, cave, a real cave dive without light from the beginning. Usually when it's this, back, you know, at 
more than 100 meters, you can still look up and you can still see the light coming. You'll understand better how this is done because it's kind of a traditional sinkhole, but it's so big, so big, so big that everything is very far away. So, so you can imagine this is like 200 meters in diameter. Well, not this part, this is a little less, maybe 150. So it's quite big. The, the diving is quite interesting because you don't really have a floor. The floor is like 200 meters. You know, you just have a ceiling. So it's a pain in the ass to, uh, uh, you know, install your lines and navigate. It, it's just it's just a little uh, on. Sometimes because this is this drawing is based pretty much on one location. This is so big that we haven't dove everything yet. There's stuff to you know just pick a line and just go down that line and see what happens. See, we don't know what's going on. In some places that I've installed line. It starts like this, and this would go really into it and then come back just like this. So it's, uh, you install line here, it goes like 100 meters and then comes back here, and then you start going down. So there's a lot of potential if you have time, just to you know, choose a line and explore something. Uh, the logistics are, you know, it's not so bad. Uh, sometimes you have a little passage you have through, depending on where you are, it's better, depending. Some some places are just too steep, so that's why we choose. So this area here, it's well you know, known because we dive there all the time because there's some trails to access it, and it's not this steep, right? But for, uh, usually go to the next closest city and hire some uh, help, you know, some muscles, so we can... Uh, get at least the tanks to the to the water uh i started diving here back in the late 90s you know doubles in air and it was a pain to go down here and do a deep pair of dive and then come up uh it, it was pretty tiring nowadays we just go on rebreathers and everything is easier we can uh, leave our bailouts down there. No one's going to come here during the night and pick bailouts or steal. There's no one around here. So we can uh, have better logistics. The famous mysterious lagoon. So that one was 274 meters. Uh, the water temperature over there is very, very little, but it's like 27 degrees Celsius. So it's really warm water. It's really, really nice. Um, here the water is not so warm, it's a little colder than that, but you can go to, the, depending on the, on the time of the year, uh, the surface can, can become uh, 24, 25, but usually it's like 22 degrees, the water, which is quite good. So the mysterious lagoon, it's located here in Mato Grosso, very close to Paraguay, in, uh, in, the, in the Bonito region, okay? Also explored by Gilberto Menezes to a depth of 220 meters, really big. This was uh, in the mid, mid to late 90s that he explored this. This is pretty much two shafts that connect at around 60 meters and just one shaft. So unless you go really, really deep after 120, you always look up and see the little glow, you always see this looking up. There's a little bit of light going up. The water is exquisite here. It's really, really, really beautiful. Look at this. This is like looking down from these stairs here. And people are just doing decompression stops here. And this is from the compression stops, maybe, I don't know, 12 meters or something like that, just looking up. So you can see the guys here, so it's crystal clear water. Uh, there's a structure because not exactly for the deep dives, but for snorkeling, there's a, a, an adventure company that sells tickets to come here and uh, people can snorkel, can enjoy the water and, and even do a, a simple scuba dive just, you know, on the lake. Uh, so they have this stair, which is a pain in the ass. But can you imagine not having the stairs and having to haul all the equipment 
with rope and everything. Think about it. Look how look how dense is everything around here. It's 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 quite painful. Uh, the Bonita region it just goes back and forth in terms of uh, logistics, but there's times there's there are no compressors available around. There are no trimix uh, fills. There's nothing. So sometimes we had to travel like this and just put everything here, and then you know pretty much transport a small dive center just to go there and uh, and dive. It was painful. So you do this, you have to spend you know a whole week or ten days doing the thing. Uh, the health hole. Uh, this is located really in the heartland of Brazil. This is the central plateau of Brazil, uh, Goiás State. This is one of the most beautiful dives I've ever done in my life. Look at the color of this water. Look at the blue. It's just so beautiful. Uh, this is a you know a place there are a lot, a lot, a lot of sinkholes. So you just see if you go on Google Earth or something, you just see tons of sinkholes all around. So this is one of them. It was so obvious that some people just back in the 80s and just went down there and dove it to check it out. The region is quite arid. It's not it doesn't have the same vegetation that, that than in the in the Mato Grosso and even Sao Paulo. Uh it's more dry and during the dry season this you know uh, things get really dry here. And it, 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 it actually reaches like 8% of uh, air humidity at some point. Um, there's a small video here. Hang on. Let me just... Um, hang on a second. Uh, laser pointer pen. I'm just trying to... Okay. This is just a video that I put up. Uh, I know it won't play to you, so I'll just slide it real slow. You guys let me know if this is really stupid what I'm doing. I just want you guys to have a notion of the scale of this cave. So this is the lake right inside the sinkhole. So think about it. Think about it. Let me know, write something, just say, Jose, it's is stupid, don't do that. Just play the video. No, don't play, just go slow. So this is the sinkhole. This is the big, big entrance. You have the cars here, the big pickup, so you have a scale. And you have a small cave, a dry cave here, and then you have a beautiful blue lake over there. To access this, region you have to go through farmland a lot of farmland you have to drive for hours and it's a pain you have to get authorizations to get look at the the amount of, of cows and everything around and so getting closer because caves are protected so they cannot really develop around caves so much and there's the terrain is not so good there's limestone and everything so there's usually a little bit of uh, vegetation around the caves. So this is a sinkhole from another angle. So this is the dry cave, and this is the lake. You can see how big it is. Let me just check on, uh, is there any messages? Sorry, okay. All right, it's working there, thank you. So this is quite big and quite interesting. This is really amazing. Uh, on the last expedition, we actually camped outside. This is not really outside, but in a close by because there, there was a, a small pond with water and we had our camp and uh, um, Lagonga station, which is a, a dive center uh, in Brasilia, which is the closest uh, big city. Uh, Lagoon organized all this so we could go and uh, try to understand what was going on uh, with this cave and where it stopped where did it go how deep was it because we didn't know uh, it was quite fun so this cave was actually um, first explored during the 80s you know as you can see 
uh, by a, uh, a theological group based in Brasilia uh, that started to do some air dives over there uh, with, you know, uh, very simple open water equipment uh, adapted to the, to, the, to the needs, right? Uh, they actually did quite a lot if you think about it. And uh, they were able to produce a little map, as you can see here, uh, the resolution is not so good, sorry guys. But um, let me change the pointer. Okay, so this is the, the the entrance sinkhole here. Okay, so and this is the water. This is the lake. Okay, so they already went there and they went under the cave for real, and they actually did some deep dives over there on air. You know, so it it was quite interesting. I didn't have a lot to haul equipment down. Now we have a lot of stuff that we can use. All right. Um, let me see here. Hang on. Uh, find your options. I don't know what I'm doing. Hang on. Uh, wait. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to. Not this. Find your options, maybe? Okay. All right. So some more videos the logistics here are a pain in the ass because it's you know 50 meters so we there every time it rains everything just grows in here so it's you have to chop everything down chop in the sense of these small plants right not the big trees but the small plants it's quite dense here i am Cleaning, sorry for the, it's, uh, the white is not very good here, but I'm here on rope trying to clean a little bit of, of what had grown from the last expedition so we could have a clearer path so, you know, we can go down and uh, work better, all right? So it's, it's, it's a really a, a pain. So we have to, you know, have a structure because the sun here during the winter time, the, it's so dry, but it's winter, but it's still hot, that it really, really gets hot here. Me and Guilherme here one day, we were diving here and we kind of didn't bring so much water. Oh my God, it was one of the worst days of my life. We worked so hard to clean this and install ropes and get gear down that we kind of forgot to drink water. And once we got, we got up, we were so dehydrated, we almost fainted. So these are the locals who are really top-notch guys. These are the local cowboys. Here's their, uh, their attire. Uh, they're really nice, but pretty much all of them are really afraid of the hole. There are so many mystical things around this. It's, it's quite funny. Um, just, you know, walkie-talkies, there's a Tyrolean line here that goes down that helps haul equipment. Uh, you know, throughout the years, a lot of people just, you know, contributed for these, these dives to be done, right? We kind of put them, uh, put the tanks uh, here and uh, haul them down. Uh, pretty much for you, for you to do a dive there, you have to prepare for one day if it's, if the, the you know, the forest is not very grown. You can just go, prepare for one day, dive the next day, and come up. We don't have a structure down there on the, inside the sinkhole, so everything just stays a little bit like this. You know, uh, uh, so it's, it's not very organized in the sense that we don't have racks in uh, specific spaces. There's a lot of rocks all around, so it's hard even to, for you to get a space to, you know, to comfortably sit down. Um, you don't go there for a couple of months and everything just grows like this. It's pretty amazing. You can clean it in a couple of months. Everything is, uh, it's like that again. But, you know, look at the water. Look how deep is this blue. This is around noon, so... This is one of the best moments for you to be doing deco stops or something. You just look up and you see the, the, the sun rays inside the water. It's one of the most beautiful things you can, you can see. Uh, during all X expeditions, there's a lot of people helping out and uh, filming and, uh, you know, 
safe divers, deep divers, everything that you can imagine. We had a lot of people. So this is uh, the the map. Uh, you get a better understanding of uh, of the cave once I put on the profile. But this is pretty much the entrancing hole, the dry part. This is the small cave over there. This is the lake that you can, you know, no overhead environment here. It's just uh, open water. And then you just have this really large, really, really large. This is really big. You can see the scale here. So from here to here, it's, you know, 40 meters. And it divides into this side of the cave and this side of the cave. Let me just put the the pointer, the the pen pointer. So you can either take a tunnel. There's some stuff on the sides that actually need some exploring. And then it just goes down to 80 meters, just like that. Just goes like a, maybe 30 degree angle just going down. And it reaches a really beautiful fracture here. That's starts at 80 meters, this fracture goes up to zero meters, you'll see from the, uh, on the next slide. And then it goes down the fracture, and that was the objective of the last expedition, because I had explored this, fra this fracture with uh, Guilherme and, uh, and Lucio to 115, then we went to 179 or something, and then we were like, well, when this is going to stop? And the last expedition was pretty much to understand where did it stop? Well, it stopped at 185. There's another part here with a small passage that will lead to a large room that is quite interesting because it goes down and there's a fracture here. Really thin fracture that I believe this is much higher this is at 20 meters, this is at 80. So this will go under probably connecting back here. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, there's stuff. People just explored a little bit more here already, but we don't. Uh, there's tons of stuff to, to explore here. There's a, a, a small dry cave with a little bit of water here, side mount. There's a restriction here, but I think you can pass through. And there's stuff to explore here too. So just a profile so you can understand a little bit more how the cave develops. So this is the, and the these are where the cars stay. There's the Tyrolean line that you know put, puts equipment pretty much here. We haul equipment down here and we start diving, you know, very steep, just really gets deep, just 40 meters, just immediately, just like that, boom. And then you start on the atom. So this is the profile coming from here through the fracture. So the fracture is quite long like here. It's long, but on the other side, it's very thin, you know? So there's, you, you can fit a Boeing here if you want. This is really, really high. So here it's 80 meters deep but the ceiling goes almost to zero so this is really really big you can check out the scale of the divers here so you go down this quite interesting fracture you can go up also of course you can go down and just there's a, a rock in the in, in, in the middle of the way you just go around it and then you reach it just starts to open and then you reach a really large room at 185 and at 185 it the the floor is really 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 flat it's flat 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 now there's of course some uh, pieces of rock but it's it's very leveled so uh it's quite interesting some uh some images so i'm gonna change to the pointer to something oh sorry Okay, here. So this is the entrance. Look, this is Gabrielzinho, one of uh, our safety divers. Look how beautiful this is. 
the rays. But exploring and mapping, look what happens. The cave is really beautiful. But once you touch a wall for some reason, either to, you know, for a, a tie off for your line or uh, it's just too, you know, too small for you to fit. Look what happens. This is. Look what happened. This is a rock that just slipped and started to move along the side of the cave. So it's just really dirty. We did uh, a lot of data collecting over there, traditional way, uh, a lot of percolation also. This is the dry cave. It's just look, look how this is the line. Look what happens. It's just, you know, the amount of silt that, that, that you can find in the cave. It's a lot. Some beautiful colors. Then this is the fracture. This is the fracture. It starts like this, but it can actually be, you know, not very wide. Manemo uh, for data, data collection. We didn't use it that much because it didn't work that, that well. Uh, going down the fracture. It just gets dirty a lot. Look how fractured is the rock. You can see that once you touch here for, for a tie off, maybe that you need to tie off your line or something. Most of the times you have to retie two or three times because just pieces just start to fall off every time. It's really painful to so go down the fracture. You go down and then like at around maybe 180, 175 to 180, depends. You kind of have a, 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 the last drop and then there's a floor. And then once you get in the floor, look how, how level is this? You know, it's very level. You start moving and it's really, really, really large passage. Also very dirty. As you can see, but it's quite large. The passage pretty much here, 182. The bottom of the, the passage is at around 185, give or take. The passage here, very, very, it's just every time you do a tie off, this is what happens because all the silt just comes up and starts, you know, uh, moving around. Um, these images are from uh, Guilherme, which is, can you imagine? I was complaining because I was, you know, with the real placing line in front. But Guilherme and Lucy were back, you know, having more silt than I did. And then Guilherme was also filming the damn thing. It's a lot of task load for, uh, for someone at 180 or 185 meters, uh, you know. You really have to be careful because uh, CO2 is a big problem. You can't, most of the times, you cannot see the walls from one side to the other in the, in the, in the, the deep passage. And this passage just goes and we just had to turn because, you know, uh, time was, you know, we didn't, it was our plan. We didn't have more bailouts and stuff. So we just had to follow our plan and just start to go up. Uh, going up, it, you know, mo a little bit of the of the deco was done at the fracture itself because it started at 100 meters, something like that. Uh, the fracture going up, you, you know, uh, it's just everything is falling apart on, on top of you. This is actually GABA filming. So look, it's at 150. So GABA was uh, our deep uh, safety diver at 150 meters. And once um, Guilherme passed him, got, got his, the camera to him, and he was filming us coming up. So this is, a, you know, the type of uh, environment at 150 that, you know, you have to work. But it's, uh, it's quite nice, I cannot complain. Um, so go up, go up, go up. And uh, most Nico you do like this because once you go out the fracture and uh, you, you know, you move 10 or 15 meters, you start looking at 
the exit duct of the cage. And the last meters of decompression, it's like this. Look at the visibility. You know, you can pretty much see the, all the trees far away. So it's, it's quite rewarding as a, as a cave to dive. Uh, hang on, uh, pointer. No, I think it's this. Okay, so this is uh, the, deep, the, the deep exploration team. So Guilherme, myself, and Lucio. And uh, it was quite interesting. Let me just see if there's any questions here at the chat. Hang on a second. Uh, in the city, where is Guilherme's bathroom? Okay. Yeah, man. Okay. Really great moments. That's for sure. Yeah, guys. Quite, really quite nice. Uh, hang on. Let me go back to the presentation. Okay. So this is another present. Uh, this is another dive. This one is in uh, Poço Verde, or the Green Sink. It's located in Bahia, right in the middle of Bahia. Uh, it's a uh, quite interesting karstic region. Also very dry, as you can see here. So we went here to do a deep dive on the Green Sink on someone else's project. This project is actually from... Uh, Dr. Laszlo. Dr. Laszlo is, uh, uh, you know, one of the, or if the most uh, uh, important deep diver right now in in Brazil, uh, he 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 does regularly dives to uh, 200 meters and 180 and whatnot. But he didn't have a lot of experience in caves, so uh, I went there just, you know, to to help out a little bit on uh, on his project. And I'm glad he called me, and I'm glad I, I went there. So the green sink is pretty much also a sinkhole, a, a dull line that is yet to be completely formed. As you can see here, let me just put the pointer, the pen, maybe. Yeah. So you can imagine here there's the sink, the dull line, but this is yet up. This will have to fall at some point. Structurally, this won't be able to, to stay up. So this will fall, and then we'll see uh, what we expect from, a, from a, a, a sinkhole, right? But right now, there's only little bits on the side that had already fall. And there's a bridge here that is almost falling. So. As you can see, these are the sides. They can they kind of end here, and they end like this. I'm here at the end. Look, this is very unstable already. Very fractured limestone. The limestone here is really fractured, as you can see. They actually connect this side with the other side. They actually connect under because I was able to see a little bit of light coming from this side on a, on a small passage. One of this is Dr. Laszlo, okay, by the way, and this bald guy is me. Uh, there's a lot of um, bees on these walls, on this limestone. So you really have to be careful so you don't speak too loud, don't make a lot of noises. So they, they stay in their, in their uh, home and don't bite you. Uh, this is the small video. Let me just okay. Okay, so this is a, uh, an addition. This uh, Dr. Laszlo put. Uh, I just you know compacted because it's long, but he has this dive on the, on his YouTube channel, uh, Laszlo Moxari. So as you can see here, he did a nice animation showing the two things. So here, the bridge. There's actually a, con a connection underwater at around 60 meters. You can you can see something here. Maybe not 60, maybe 50. You can you can see the light coming from here. So you have to, you know, go there and search. It's uh, around 60 meters. Once once at, at some point this wall all this will fall down and then we'll have a 60 meter sinkhole here. Hopefully in uh, many thousands of years. 
So the, the Dr. Lazo did the, the 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 first push dive in 2016 to 100 and uh, uh, 218. Actually, this thing was dived dived by some spele speleologists back back in the 90s. Back in the 90s, I think August Waller uh, did some dives here. And since it's also used for the uh, for water collection to the nearest city. Uh, there are some commercial divers that had to go there and install pumps and stuff. So you see a lot of uh, machinery underwater still. So they, some people had the, uh, dove here. So Laszlo went there in 2016, did a 118, and felt the need the, to, you know, some more experience for uh, to continue the exploration. That's why I went. So this is just some uh, images of the sinks. Sink one, sink two. You see the structure. This is uh, some structures for the for the city water uh, management, whatever. See some piping. There, there's some uh, metallic structures over there. And you can you can actually during the the dive you can you can hear the pumps working. So we had a lot of help from uh, Bahia State uh, Fire Department. They hold all our equipment and did the safety uh, uh, for our dive. They have divers on uh, uh, that could help us. They hold all our equipment, bailouts, rebreathers, everything. We equip in the, in the water and off we went. So the cave pretty much just goes down at an angle without stopping, it just goes. It goes really deep on the, of course, on the lake. It just goes really deep to 50 meters immediately, and then there's the conduct. We went downstream, but I, I didn't go because I didn't have time. But there, I'm pretty sure there's an upstream side on the other sink. Just someone has to go there and find it. Uh, but we went downstream. Why? There's no flow, but how do I know it? There's trash we actually saw a bunch of trash like coca-cola cans and straws and whatnot so uh there's no one in this region you know uh not lo a lot of people come here but some locals from the nearest town just come here to relax on the water just to have you know uh, a re relaxed day so they probably you know bring food and stuff and uh, some of it just shows up down there. But I also found some uh, some stuff that people just don't bring on picnics, just like bleach uh, packages and stuff, household stuff. So uh, I guess there's some connection here uh, with the city at some point, or with a, with a river, I don't know, so for the, the geologists and hydrogeologists to explore. Um, just a little bit of the video. It was uh, a quite interesting dive. Um, the water here is quite warm also, 27, 26, 27. Uh, this is where the the real exploration started for this dive. Also, it just everything just very dirty. The cave is quite large, there's really many, many, many places that there's development, we just went straight, but there was a lot of side tunnels coming and going. Um, it's quite interesting. A lot of these structures, really large rooms at some point, uh, no flow, uh, really, really quite interesting dive. Uh, I didn't mention, uh, I believe the, the the longest dive on the B, on the the household project was something around nine hours, uh, something like that, and the, uh, because we were collecting data and stuff. But the the the, old, the 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 latest dive was around maybe eight hours and something, eight hours and a half maybe, and here. Uh, I think Laszlo stayed here. I'm, I'm sure he will tell later in the video. Let me see. Okay, he stayed seven hours and thirty minutes because of his uh, graduate factor choice. 
you know, I'm I'm getting old, so I don't like to be so much time in water because my back starts to be sore and stuff. And uh, and I I know I know my you know my body and I adjust. So I use a, a little bit different uh, gradient factor. So I actually left the water maybe 45 minutes early or something like that. And uh, it was quite interesting. All right. Thank you guys. Uh, hope you. I'm sorry the videos won't play so well in uh, on you know during these live presentations, but uh, I hope you guys could um, could enjoy some of the of the local dives. If you have any questions, please shoot. Uh, some questions, Gustavo. I didn't. I I don't know when did you ask the question, but everything there that we showed today, it's everything is limestone. Different kinds of limestone. Different regions have uh, little, little uh, uh, specific limestones, but everything was limestone. Um, at Poço Verde, okay. Now I saw it. Sorry. Uh, yes, it's limestone. There's the, the, if you put Poço Verde um, Orolândia. There's actually a, a hydrogeologist that did a, a, a master's thesis in there. It's a limestone, but in that specific region of Orolândia, it's where a, a very different limestones connect. So sometimes you have one type of lim limestone on the on on the on the crust, and it just changes. Uh, so uh, it's a, it's a little bit different. Uh, Depending where you are, and it's very mixed in that region. So, if someone has a question, just shoot. Well, that, do you know how is the situation in uh, Brazil right now to go to the caves? Or? Yeah, to to explore and to go dive, right? Yeah, not only in Brazil. Yeah, there, the the we we had a lot of a lot of you know a lot of trouble. Uh, Back in the in the early 2000s, because the government, the federal government, just went on and uh, did a not a law, but you know, uh, an instruction, a normative instruction that puts a lot of constraints to access caves, because caves in Brazil are the property of the Federation of the Union, not the property of the landowner around. So that's not in place anymore. So you can you are free to dive at any cave that the owner around that cave grants you access to the cave with some rules. Uh, first is that you, the, the owner cannot charge you for access. So the owner cannot, okay, I'll grant you access, but you have to pay me a fee. No, he cannot do that. He has to do it for free. If he wants to charge for access to the cave, then he has rules he has to follow. He has to do uh, some sort of um, uh, environmental impact study, uh, build infrastructure, do the map, uh, do a biolo biology study. I mean, it's uh, you know a little bit of, uh, of a pain. It gets expensive, so not many people did. Who has done it? The mysterious lagoon has done it. I think Tuta is exploring in, in, in those manners the, the Mimoso cave. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if Pratinha did it. Uh, but you're free to go if the, the owner grants you access. Biela, uh, the video you can find Biela on the YouTube channel of Laszlo. Dr. Laszlo has a, uh, a YouTube channel that he posts many of his exploration dives, uh, ocean and stuff. And if you search his channel, you will find that video that he, he edited. Check it out. Yeah, it's uh, he, he he does nice videos because he puts, you know, everything. I, I usually don't do that, like putting the, the decompression schedule, what gases and stuff like that. But he's, you know, 
he takes the time to 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 do it so uh it's it's quite nice so uh, when will you come to continue exploration of household well there's i don't know i have to ask my wife <laughs> that's the best answer i can do <laughs> You know, it, I mean, you know, <laughs> I would love to continue that exploration and many more, especially with you guys. You know, uh, let's note that uh, it's not easy to, to go deep with someone, you know, but uh, if there's someone that I would go deep diving, it's uh, with Guilherme uh, and Lucio, for sure. Those guys are... Uh, really 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 top-notch uh, divers and instructors so you know you have to really trust your life with these things because uh, it is your life at risk because at at those depths you know two minutes that you you have a problem it just it just creates a, 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 a huge problem on the way back you know it's just just creates a, a, a problem that probably won't be manageable unless you really have a nice team and you have everything in place. Yeah, that's a good excuse to come to Gabriel marriage. Yeah, let's see if we can travel, right? I'm on another other continent. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully we will have to, you know, we'll be able to travel. Let's see. I'm sure miss the caves and you guys, that's for sure. Someone else? Questions? Thank you, Carlos, o Gaúcho. Thanks, Gustavo, Anju. Rodrigão, thanks, Biela also. More people here that I know. Yeah, Gabriel. I'm pretty sure my wife is invited to your, to your marriage. Don't worry. Obrigado, <laughs> Jean. Thanks, Jean. Danilo, uh, man, it's it's kind of hard to to say what impressed most, but I, I would have to say the 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 Burak to Inferno because it's the passages are so huge, the water is so beautiful and clean that every time you you dive and you come out, you say, "Damn, it's just awesome," you know. The green, you know, the green thing is awesome too, but it's not as beautiful. Uh, the water is not as blue. Uh, the passages are not as wide and uh, gigantic. So just it just means that, of course, it's exploration. Every time I explore something, it doesn't matter the depth, but every time I see something new, it's just, you know, it's a, such a privilege to be, especially when you first want to see it, that you know every time you're amazed but i would have to say that the the, the hell's hole is just amazing for its size and uh, uh, watercolor and it's not only that uh it's you know when you're around friends not, of course laszlo is my friend but i didn't do many dives with laszlo so we don't have the same relationship that I, I have with uh, Guilherme and Lucio, for example. So doing that with like brothers, per se, it's just awesome, you know? Rodrigo, there's a nice zip line for equipment. Oh, nice. So the Mysterious Lagoon is, uh, wow, getting easy. That's nice. Especially when doing deep dives that you have to hold, uh, you know, a lot of tanks. Uh, it's well. I'm glad they they invested. I don't know. Does someone have plans to explore Agua Milagrosa? I don't know. Uh, I haven't I haven't been there, so I, I'm not even sure there's the possibility to explore more. I don't know if it closes. There's passage. I don't know why they stopped at 180. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Do you know, Luis? I don't know. Uh, I have I have no idea. Thanks, guys. See you guys soon.